Ladies and gentlemen, this is an issue. It's a matter of public safety. I have shocking and disturbing news that I have to share with you uh, about the future of electric vehicles uh, as EV makers are dropping a really important safety feature from new vehicles uh, for a little bit of a ridiculous reason, if you ask me. But first, I want to tell you guys about something that's going on that may be getting swept under the rug here. And it says that, uh, you know, world facing acute diesel shortage. Um, but will China boost exports? Okay. World facing acute diesel shortage. All right. Motorists could find, get this folks, Russian diesel in their tanks, even after bans take effect because regulators lack tools to trace the origin of fuel when it has passed through other countries. Folks, this is disturbing and shocking news. Can you imagine United States ultimately funding Russian enterprise, putting Russian diesel fuel in tanks as we rapidly deplete our reserves and, and don't have a logical or reliable means of reproducing because of oil refineries and fuel refineries and diesel refineries uh, not being able to keep up with the demand to produce the supply. Folks, it says here that uh, faster than expected demand rebound in China could pose significant questions for global diesel supply and product tanker markets, all right? Uh, and it says that if the European Union embargo on the import of Russian refined products and an associated ban on insurance and reinsurance strangles Russian diesel exports, then the globe is facing an acute shortage. And uh, while saying that it is a possibility that this Russian fuel is going to end up in the tanks of folks' vehicles unknowingly, unknowingly. So it's a double whammy here with the possibility of the global shortage while having to support Russia in its efforts, while Russia is theoretically the main reason why the United States continuously spends billions and billions and hundreds of billions of dollars in Ukraine fighting this, this, this war. Meanwhile, we're losing safety features here and around the world, folks. Electric vehicle makers are dropping AM radio access, okay? And it says that uh, video ended up not killing the radio star, but electric vehicles are positively destroying AM radio. And it says here that when manufacturers, drivers, and the federal government are turning more and more to electric vehicles, the end of AM radio as we know it might be upon us. This is reported by the New York Times. It says that uh, distorted broad broadcasts, there's an interesting technical reason for the fall of AM, which typically broadcasts talk and religious shows, as well as local news and weather. Car makers say electromagnetic interference from EVs disrupts signal reception, causing static noise and a high frequency hum kind of like the olden days when you had to make a phone call while someone in the house was using the internet fm signals are less likely to get scrambled now it says here that some experts some experts uh say the audio problems should be a simple fix uh an xperi engineer uh puja nair told the new york times that Shield cables, filters, and careful placement of electrical components in the vehicles should keep the interference to a minimum. But all that costs money, and it's easier to just drop the wavelength altogether, much to the uh, charging uh, of the talk radio stars who make millions, broadcasting to millions of listeners suck in their cars. Um... I think it's supposed to say stuck in their cars. So it says here that Tesla, Audi, Porsche, Volvo, and Volkswagen have already removed AM from their EVs. Ford's popular F-150 Lightning pickup truck will also drop the signal for its 2023 models. Though not as popular as FM radio, manufacturers might be forgetting just how many people tune into AM regularly. For at least two hours a day, about 47 million Americans listen to AM radio, representing about 20% of the radio listening public. Uh, and this is according to the Nielsen Company. 
Now, here's where it gets real, real, real tricky, folks. Um, needless to say, radio hosts are more than perturbed. It's a killer for us because most of our listening audience is in the morning drive and afternoon drive when people are going to work and coming from work. And if we're not there in the car, we're non-existent. And this is according to Ron. Uh, January of WATV AM in Birmingham, Alabama. So basically, the elimination of AM radio signals and AM radio stations in these EVs with the push of EVs taking over means that these AM broadcasters are literally about to find themselves out of a job because they won't have the ability to reach the listeners that they once had. Now, um, uh, it says here that manufacturers uh edward markey said access to am radio is an issue of public safety especially in areas where wi-fi and broadband are scarce if car makers don't change their tune am radio might just go the way of dial up and you know am radio stations are uh t typically where you will find an emergency broadcast announcement if there's a, a, a natural a natural disaster or uh, a state of an emergency or or anything of the, of the sort and for these vehicles to not have it kind of puts them into a, 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 a tight situation of being vulnerable to the catastrophic dangers of what could be. But then if you think about it, if that's the case, these EVs ain't going to make it but two, three hundred miles and they're going to conk out because they don't have any more battery power. So it's a moot point then. But at the same time. It's having an adverse effect in so many ways. It's, it's you know, it's the this is it's a chain reaction. It's a cause and effect. So these AM radio broadcasters are going to feel the pain as their uh, viewership goes down, their ratings go down, their income goes down, while doing a disservice to the people and providing the, and having the ability to provide them with these these broadcasts and these announcements and these updates and these safety measures that people have so relied on for so many years um the companies could probably easily find a way to incorporate this into the builds but they're about profit more so than anything else so uh the added cost doesn't translate to them and they're saying no we're going to cut it and we got several other manufacturers doing the same so it's not like it's just one one oddball one odd man out no it's there's multiple brands here that are doing the same so uh we're more than likely we're going to see this continue perhaps maybe there could be a push towards transitioning am to a, a, a another format where people could still access it you know obviously using wi-fi and perhaps maybe satellite radio is is, is an impossible option but again the limited availability and frequent uh, uh, and service range in certain rural areas and parts of the country and parts of the world will make that kind of not as effective as it is now. Uh, so, you know, we are making advancements in the te technology and as we move towards this green push for renewable energy. But, you know, there is a drawback to it, multiple drawbacks, and this happens to be one. Folks, let me know what you guys think. Drop a comment down below. Uh, me personally, I'm not looking to buy an EV. I don't think I'll buy an EV until I have to. Um, internal combustion engine for me all the way. And, uh, you know, it's like sh you still see people now riding around with cars uh, with zero emissions and, you know, running carburetors. They, they didn't even take the leap to move towards uh, fuel injection and all this technology. So I think that we can still run these uh, these gas burners for the foreseeable future. Now, granted, the prices may be high and the fuel source availability may be limited, but I don't know. I think I'd rather take my chances there instead of relying 100% on electric. What do you guys think? And now a lot of these new electric cars are coming out, and they're coming out as hybrids anyway, and the electric motors only have, you know, like a 10-mile range. So now now we're just playing with the figure, figures here to, you know, appease the government. But uh, at the end of the day, I don't think it's a really good, reliable, uh, possible evolution of transportation uh, especially when it comes to uh, hauling freight across the country i mean the batteries just they're not there not to mention the mining aspects and the uh the uh the um sustainability because once these batteries are done they're done like now we're going to have landfills full of batteries what are we doing here folks let me know what you guys think drop a comment down below i got more updates coming to you soon take care be safe